surface, ocean floor mountain. You can't see it because it's underneath the ocean. But it's this 46,000 mile long mountain range. And it, it, it's called the Mid-Oceanic Ridge. When, it's, when you're talking about the, the portion of the ridge in the Atlantic, it's the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So it, you can notice that the west side of America right here is running over this ridge that was lifting up in the Pacific. And what we're going to, you know, telling you what I'm going to be telling you is that this ridge generally coincides with where the crack was, according to Dr. Brown's theory. That the, the crust was sitting on the mantle, the crust broke. The crust eroded into a wide V, and the pressure imbalances caused the crust to push on the mantle, and the mantle bowed up into that crack, and as it lifted up into the crack, the continents went away from, from that crack, and then came to a crashing halt. The first place that the ridge rose, according to Dr. Brown's theory, is right here along the Atlantic. That's where, and that would have been closer to the equator with the way the Earth was spinning at the time. And so it would have bowed up, and the continents would have been moving away from that crack. And because the crack was growing all over the Earth, it was slowly lifting as the, uh, the mid-oceanic ridge was growing all over the Earth. It was growing in elevation as the crack was widening. When it made the big pop in the Atlantic Ocean started to come up and the continent started to move away, that would have removed the continental crust weight, which would have caused it to lift up even more, causing the continents to move further away and faster as they're moving away, causing the mantle to move up even more. And when it moves up in the Atlantic, it has to go down somewhere else, we're going to see. And so it's coming up in the Atlantic, it has to go down someplace else. That's creating a sliding effect of the continents that we will look at uh, here in a minute, but you can see, I'm again telling you what I'm going to tell you, we'll go back and look at this, but right here, this is what made the Olympic and Cascade mountain range. America sitting on a hydroplate, which is like oil, it's sitting on the water, the hydroplate of America is sitting on the water still underneath the crust. When you lift up one side, slides to the other because the water was there, came to a crashing halt on the Pacific, the rising Pacific Ridge. And in doing so, um, created our Olympic mountain ranges according to the theory. So, Dr. Brown, he, he, we're always deceived by looking at a map of the ocean floor and the earth because when you take a, a globe and you try and lay it out two dimensionally, it puts everything into distortion as you probably you know, learned in school. What Walt Brown did is he took the map of the ocean floor, made it accurate to a globe, and then he made the North and South American continent, including their continental shelves, and the European and African continental shelves, and made it accurate to the shape of the globe. And this is what you end up with when you bring them up to the crack. Doesn't that look like a nice fit? The evolutionists have a different take on it, but it, it really doesn't make sense. But what does the ridge on the ocean floor have to do with the crack and the crust? How could the 46,000 mile ridge form? Again. As we've mentioned before, this is, you know, the, the crust here pushing down on the basaltic mantle area with a subterranean chamber. Everything is balanced because the crust is pushing down even, evenly all over the earth, putting 62,000 pounds per square inch. If it was 10 miles thick, it was about 62,000 pounds per square inch all over the mantle. And, and you have to understand that rock doesn't seem like it's a very good spring, you know, that it doesn't have any springiness to it. But all, everything, when it's under 62,000 pounds, it can be springy. So the mantle's being pressed, and so the mantle is under such intense pressure that if you could remove that pressure, it would act like a spring and want to come out wherever you can remove the pressure. So everybody follow that, I hope, because there's some uh, geologists that work for AIG that don't understand that and say that the mantle can't become a spring. Everything acts like a spring. It might not move very far with a piece of pressure, but when you put 60,000 pounds, it'll become a spring. So, at the end of 150 days, this is a situation. That crack has eroded into a V-shape, and this, these crustal pieces are pushing down on the mantle with much greater pressure than the water is pushing down on the mantle. And you have to think these crustal pieces on each side uh, in the case of North America, which is currently 3,000 miles wide, 
before it moved west and crashed and buckled up with mountain ranges, it, let's say, and I'm not saying this is what it was, but let's say it was 5,000 miles wide. So you have a 5,000 mile wide continent pressing down on the mantle. And you have this crack, which, with, which Dr. Brown estimates was about 800 miles wide. So, so the crushing of the crust down on the mantle is like a hand on a tube of toothpaste. And it's pushing. And the blue here in this diagram, this V area, is like, is like the screwed off cap of the nozzle of the toothpaste, toothpaste tube. And so the crust is squishing and the toothpaste is getting ready to come out, which is the mantle. The mantle is the toothpaste, the, the hand is the crust, and it's wanting to come out through that hole. And <clears throat> it's represented by bricks. If you put a spring underneath a brick, and you widen the, the bricks away from the spring, ultimately it will pop up like that. Everybody, hopefully everybody could figure that out. And, and then the detractors of Dr. Brown, even a geologist for answering Joe says, you know, it's not a spring. Yes, it is a spring. The mantle wants to do that. It, it's a simple physics fact, which was demonstrated when they were doing this mining, this limestone quarry in Yorkshire, England in 1887. They kept digging deeper and deeper and deeper and pretty soon, they're starting to cut the bottom of the floor of the quarry, and it's the bottom of the, the floor starts exploding up into the workers' you know, faces because the wall was so heavy compared to the floor that the shale was, tr was, was wanting to get out from underneath the wall and go to the low-pressure area. And so then the low-pressure area was bowing up the quarry floor, and they couldn't quarry down anymore because the, the limestone was exploding as they were trying to go down any further. The detractors will say, but Walt, the wall is going down. You're saying America lifted up and started moving west, but the wall is going down. Well, that's where you lose it in the analogy here. If you had that wall going for another 5,000 miles out, and you had the pushing, somewhere where your hand is pushing on the toothpaste tube, you're making an indentation, a, you're making a lower area. And on the earth, that lower area was on the Pacific side. And so you're squishing the mantle. The mantle's popping up and lifting up one side of the continent as the continent moves up. The next is the physics behind these forces are demonstrated also by, and Walt has a dem I've seen him in a, in a seminar that he gave. This is a mattress. The white is like a mattress that's pressed into this box to give it a springiness, to demonstrate the springiness of the mantle. These are like little on top of here. Uh, these are like little slabs of heavy wood, and, he, and if you lay them all on the mattress, it goes flat, and it looks flat. And then what he demonstrates is he pulls off the center piece of wood, nothing happens. Pulls off one on each side of the center, nothing happens. Pull off another one on each side, boom, it just pops up in the exact shape of this 46,000 mile mid-oceanic ridge. But you'll notice that there's a problem here with this demonstration too. That's a void space. Now the mantle can't pop up with a void space. <laughs> Something has to fill that space, and the, the place that